Fox News is going to put the race baiting in overdrive. Let's watch. When you exercise your white privilege, don't think I'm not going to remember. I will use it for the future. Uncomfortable? Yes. Let's take a listen to her back on August the 18th when she's blaming cops for the violence in Ferguson. Listen. I'm just looking at all of the facts and my experiences, and I think, as well as some of my constituents think, at this point in time, uh, the State Highway Patrol, St. Louis County Police, yep. as well as well, the Ferguson Police Department may be trying to make this situation worse than what it actually is. I represent my constituents, not Governor Nixon. And so I need to tell you this. He has been absent from the minority community his entire career and only comes before us when it's politically expedient for him. And she does like to keep it classy on Twitter. Governor Jay Nixon had said, as governor, I'm committed to ensuring pain of last weekend's tragedy does not continue to be compounded by this ongoing crisis. Hashtag Ferguson. You know what she said in response? At Governor Jay Nixon, F you, Governor. I'm calling your BS and actually spelled all those words out. Uh, you know, that's uh, whatever she's. Look, here's the problem that I have with it is not just that she's obviously an extremist. But she's a race hater. She attacks people based on the color yeah. of their skin. And that's just not a good thing. That's not moral. It's wrong. It shouldn't be allowed. And two, she's a, an associate of the president. She was a delegate, as Peter said, for President Obama. Yeah. Why is it that President Obama has people like this supporting him, has people like Al Sharpton in the White House 70 times, people who are openly bigoted, openly racist, like, and, and nobody calls him on And it. don't drag your constituents in, into your uh, filthy rhetoric I, I i doubt and i and i challenge her that she stands with her constituents in those statements it's pretty it's pretty up so there ought to be yeah. some line that you don't cross if you're an elected official she's crossed attacking people on the base of the race and this white privilege stuff is just that it's attacking people based on their skin color and i think we should call it what it is <laughs> white people are discriminated against <laughs> these guys are such an embarrassment all of the statistics say the opposite say that black people are still discriminated against. But they refuse to be objective about it. Every argument Tucker Carlson has ever made on this issue that we've covered on this show, it's all been emotionalistic garbage. So why don't we go ahead and look at some statistics or look at some facts to really understand the total picture of discrimination in America and see what's a bigger problem, reverse racism or racism. Whites and blacks use drugs at a similar rate, but, of course, blacks are arrested four to six times more often. Now, uh, let me just pause and reflect on that for a second, because uh, oftentimes we mention that and we just kind of gloss over it, but we really shouldn't, because understand, it's one of those facts where there is no counter side to it. There is no other side. Whites and blacks use at a similar rate, blacks are arrested four to six times more often. So, all else being equal, what's the difference? Skin color. So what's the reality? The police are looking for drug activity in certain segments of the population and not in others. What are the chances some uh, Wall Street billionaire is going to be stop and frisked as he's walking through the streets of New York City? They're not going to do that to him because he's white and he wears a suit and tie and he looks like he may have some power or some political connections. So he totally gets away with it. But meanwhile, it's blacks and Hispanics who are getting stopped all the time. It really shows you, again, it's one of those facts where there is no other side to it. It's flat-out racist, it's flat-out discriminatory, and the numbers show it. Also, whites are more likely to sell drugs, but blacks are more likely to get arrested for selling drugs. Again, there's no multiple interpretations of that. It is what it is. Whites are more likely to sell drugs, blacks are more likely to get arrested for selling drugs. Another one. Black teens are 21 times more likely to be killed by cops. There's a process of dehumanization that goes on where you have a, a majority white police departments. They're more afraid. They're scared of black people. They have this complex where they attribute superhuman abilities to them. I mean, we saw it perfectly in Darren Wilson's statement and George Zimmerman's statement where they talk about he was a demon and he was so strong and I was just a little scared little boy. I couldn't, I couldn't defend myself. Well, then maybe you shouldn't be an officer. How about that? You ever thought about that? You're admitting that you can't control yourself and you can't control the situation. So maybe you're the problem. Uh, also, black resumes with the same information as white resumes get 50% less callbacks. Again, 
the only difference between the two resumes in this study were that one resume had a traditional black name, the other one had a traditional white name. The white name got a hit immediately, the black name did not. Uh, white net worth is $142,000. Black net worth, $11,000. Now this is one of those facts where the conservatives will bring up the same fact and use that as evidence for, oh, see, white people just work harder, white people are just better, man, they care more about stuff like that now. But what's the reality? When we talk about net worth, net worth, uh, most of the time, there's a connection between your family history and your net worth. Because uh, in many white families, upper middle class white families, even middle class white families, but definitely rich white families, money is passed down from generation to generation. The estate tax doesn't kick in until it's like, you know, a fraction of the top 1%. So we're talking about wealth passed down and passed down and passed down. So white people are the beneficiaries of a system that previously was openly racist and discriminatory, whether it's Jim Crow or segregation or more nuanced forms of discrimination in the North. So... Uh, white people are the beneficiaries of black labor, free labor, for a very long time, and then cheaper labor for a very long time, and discrimination, and then it reflects itself in the numbers today when it comes to the net worth. So what that fact shows us is we still have a racist system in many respects. It doesn't show us that, well, you know those black people, they just genetically inferior. No, if anything, you might be genetically inferior for even attempting to make that argument because it's such a stupid argument. Uh, and then also... Just look at the way that they laid out their argument there, right? They just play the outrage game. Press the outrage button. Man, man, we're outraged. And what are they outraged about? They're outraged because you have some people calling out racism. And they say, no, calling out racism is racism. So therefore, they've set it up so that any time any liberal talks about race... It is, by definition, racist. It's a very clever, cute trick to shut down debate and shut down discussion and scare most Democratic politicians from ever overtly talking about race issues. So it's racist to even discuss race, according to these guys. Unless, of course, it's... Uh, them discussing race, in which case they're allowed to do it all day long. It's just the Democrats and the liberals and the black people who are not allowed to discuss race. 